Everyone, Dwayne here. And I'm Gavin. And we're with Bronco Wild Outdoors. And today we're finally, finally, man, we're finally getting to do this video, the oil change on our 2021 Badlands Bronco. So what are you expecting? So you've never helped me change oil in a car before. Right. I mean, maybe, no, I think it was in the green car. Uh, you did in the Mustang. You yes. did. You actually, well, I you, you, like you watched. You watched and you handed me yeah. some tools and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool, right? So, yeah. all right. So uh, you have the gist of it. Yeah. All right. Well, this is actually my first time changing the oil on a 2021 Ford Bronco. 2.7, by the way. Now, there's a couple of things out there in the owner's manual. Uh, it's recommended that seven quarts of oil is what it takes. But what have we been hearing? Where is People can't get seven quarts yeah. in it. Maybe they only drain out of six quarts, six and a quarter. So today we're doing the unconventional. So stick around to the end of this video. It's going to be very, very cool. This is not your typical run-of-the-mill oil change video. We're going to be doing things a little bit different just to show you not saying this is how you do it i'm actually not recommending it at all however i am going to show you some of the stuff that we're doing to try to identify the discrepancy between the owner's manual recommendations of seven quarts of oil and actually what you drain out and put back in one so that's going to be critical and a couple small tips that maybe you can use uh, especially as your bronco gets older this stuff will uh, be more important but I think uh, what we're gonna do here is gonna be pretty cool so stick around we're doing something a little bit different now I want to make it clear once again I am NOT recommending this is how you change your oil I think what we're doing here is some things that are uh, unconventional uh, to try to show where the seventh quart of oil is right and so that is the big question now whatever um, and by the way this is my 2021 Ford Badlands Bronco 2.7 uh, Sasquatch soft top. Now, whenever I ordered my Bronco, I figured I would go ahead and go with the block heater. I like call it a crankcase heater, but they actually call it a block heater. Um, when you go with that option, or if you've ever seen this little funny looking little plug under the hood right here on a Bronco, this is where you plug in your crankcase heater or your block heater. So I'm gonna show you something that I did here. Um, my Bronco, or Gavin and I's Bronco, I gotta say ours, right? I keep saying mine like, like it's not yours too. But um, I haven't cranked it in 48 hours. So um, that's, that's a long time for allowing drain back. So one thing we're not gonna have is the question is, is oil sitting in parts of the engine and slowly draining back? If it's gonna drain back, it would have done it in two days. So, uh, now, we need oil to be warm to help it drain out, preferably. You don't have to, but it's, it's, it should be done. That's the recommendation by anyone out there that shows you how to change oil in a car. Uh, so what I did here was decided to use my block heater that I ordered with my Bronco. By the way, it was about $110. Um, I don't need it for Southeastern Virginia, but I figured, well, what if we go to Colorado or something like that, and hey, the bottom drops out when we're there. All we need is an extension cord and some power and we're good to go. Um, and in the notes, I'll mention something that's in the owner's manual that I don't think is correct. I'm actually gonna send it off to Ford and see, maybe they wanna rewrite something. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and unplug this right now. No standard extension cord, nothing fancy there. You know what to do with that. Yep. Now, if you look right here, Becky's gonna show us the plug on here. You'll see this is your uh, standard, I guess it's a uh, 15 amp, 115 volt plug, um, you know, a neutral, a hot, and a ground, typical three-prong extension cord plugs in. Now, when you're done, this little protective boot goes right back over it. And to show you, since you can't feel what we're feeling here, there's some heat coming off the engine. It's actually pretty decent. Uh, but I'm gonna go inside and show you some telemetry to give you an idea where the engine oil is right now, even though we haven't run this thing in two days. So, Come on, let's show you. All right, so right here you'll see I'm sitting in the Bronco. I, I just hit the ignition, uh, not starting it, just turning on the accessories. And after I okayed through everything that the hood's open, the door's open, and all that good stuff, you can see the engine oil temperature is at 124 degrees. Now, this was achieved 
over the last two days. Actually, it just took about four hours. Um, I haven't cranked it in two days, but in the last four hours, I plugged in the block heater, and the block heater has created enough heat in the engine to um, bring it up to 124 degrees. So our oil is plenty warm, ready to be drained out. Now, one thing I did forget to mention earlier is I wanna make sure that this is what I do. I'm not crawling underneath the Bronco with a key fob in my pocket. It would be my luck that I'd roll over and find the, uh, the auto start <laughs> as I'm draining the oil out, and that wouldn't be something that I'd wanna have happen. So uh, just for the heck of it, I'm gonna take the key fob and put it over here on my workbench, which by the way, I wanna show you something on the workbench anyway. All right, so here's what we have. We have a couple things we're gonna be using today. We have a flashlight, maybe use that. That's if Gavin drops something, we have to find it, mm -hmm. right? All right. Um, you have rubber gloves. If you can wear rubber gloves, then highly recommend it. We have your basic pair of pliers. We have a torque wrench, safety glasses, which I may or may not use because I have these on, but if I take these off, I will be wearing something to, just in case. Uh, we have a 3 8 drive ratchet with a 15 millimeter socket. Um, I have a half inch drive socket here with 27 millimeter. Now this is for the oil canister. Uh, now my new toy here, this is something I was teasing out on our live stream the other night, which by the way, if you haven't watched it every Sunday night at 8 p.m., we do a live called Extreme, um, Extreme Bronco. Um, and we have some cool stuff that we talk about. So Garage Boss. Garage Boss makes this thing here called the Reacher. Now the Reacher is actually pretty cool. And I'll tell you why I like it for the Bronco. Uh, we look right here, no messes, no spills. That's one thing I like about it. Uh, it's compact, it's very short. It holds 12 and a half uh, quarts of oil. So basically no problem getting an oil change out of a, a Bronco. But it has these cool extensions here and this little funnel on top to help catch. So uh, basic instructions on the back. It's easy to figure out, but you know, for what it's worth, right here it is. We have a new OEM Ford drain plug. Now. There again, some of the stuff that we're doing on this oil change, you can follow some of it to get an idea how the oil change is done, but I wanna make it very clear. I'm not recommending or even saying that you have to change the oil plug at each oil change. It's just what I'm gonna do. And the reason why I'm gonna do it is I wanna prevent any kind of slow seepage around the, um, the drain. And there is a rubber O-ring here. Um, I don't know how long that O-ring lasts. I don't know if it's every four changes, five, six. I have no idea. So I'm gonna change mine every time. The OEM drain plug, you can get it at Ford for about $12. I did notice when I was in AutoZone picking up this uh, Reacher here that they have them for about $6. And it looks, they look identical. I couldn't tell the difference, you know, looking at them, but uh, could they be different? I have no idea, but I just went to Ford, picked this up. At the same time, I picked up the OEM oil filter. So we're going to, uh, uh, see how this the old one comes out of the canister and how this goes in a few little quirks with this one that we got to work through and go from there now the I've been talking about synthetic full synthetic oil uh, because we're shy of 2,000 miles we're at like 16 1700 miles on the Bronco uh, we're just going to go ahead and go back with the motocraft synthetic blend so this is a 530 this is what's recommended by Ford um, it's for gasoline engines that's key uh, but if we look on the back, um, any oil that you use, you want to look for the API rating. You want to make sure it says SN+. SN+, would be uh, your uh, oils used for boosted engines, engines that get really, really hot, which does happen to boosted engines. Now, one thing I want to make very, uh, well, I'm just going to bring it to your attention anyway. Um, protects against harmful engine composites. That's cool. And we expect that. But... If you read on the back of the motocraft, you're not gonna be able to see it with the camera. It says, helps protect engines against piston damage by reducing oil-derived pre-ignition, LSPI. So it is my contention that some of the engines that have been uh, failed, the 2.7s, potentially is an LSPI issue. And um, I mean, they're working through that, but uh, this oil right here is supposed to help with that, if not prevent it. So we'll see what happens there. Now, we do have seven quarts of oil. That's what's recommended. Uh, what we actually put in here will be determined by the end of this oil change. Um, also, I've been talking about this on our channel for quite some time. We are going to do a uh, oil analysis. So the oil will actually go into here. 
Um, this canister will get wrapped in this special oil absorbent material in case the cap leaks. This will go into the shipping bottle here and we will fill out some paperwork from Blackstone and I give all the information they ask for front and rear of this and this will get shipped back. So after we do our oil change and we're enjoying our Bronco again in, um, in a few days to a few weeks, depends on the workload, uh, we'll get a response, we'll get an email with a report of the engine oil uh, uh, condition that came out of our Bronco. So we'll know any kind of wear, anything like that, um, and get an idea of the health of the engine there. There again, I am not recommending this on your basic oil change. So as we go through the oil change, I'm going to try to mention the things that would be considered standard everyday oil change and then what I'm doing as an engine builder or an ex-engine builder. I'm not building engines anymore. Uh, however, who knows, with little man here that's standing over here right behind, right behind me, dude, you need to be helped. Uh, I might uh, build one with him so he can kind of see the process. So I don't want to make it like we're building them right now and testing them every day. It's just uh, I've built a lot of them in the past. And so it's still some habits are hard to break. Um, and over here, we have some cool picks and hooks. So we're going to need these with the oil filter. And you'll see when these, uh, these come in. And what else do we have, Mr. Gavin? We have something else over here. Oh, another quirk of an engine builder. I have some small magnets. Now, what are we going to do with these? At the very end of the video, the magnets will be tested and we'll see how they work. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started on this oil change. It's about time, right? Um, one of the things I want to do is I like adding um, areas for, uh, uh, you know, basically to allow uh, air to get into the engine. So when we allow air to get into the top of the engine, it drains the oil out much, much faster. So we're going to start by taking off the oil fill cap here. And you see we have a little O-ring there again, composite plastic, a little O-ring on it. Start by wiping it off. Now, when I go to put this back, even though I did wipe some of this off, I'll make sure that there's just a tad bit of oil on this O-ring so it doesn't uh, do any rip. Now, if you notice, I put down a little rag here. I just like keeping everything as clean as possible. The next thing I'm going to do is pull the dipstick out. Now, on the dipstick, I'm not going to pull it all the way out. I'm going to lift it up a little bit. Just let it hang right here. Uh, you can take it out, wipe it off, lay it up here if you want to. Uh, you can leave it like that. It doesn't really matter, but that's pull it away from the oil. Now, one of the things that in a traditional oil change that I would do at this point, the next thing is I'd take the 27 millimeter and I would unscrew our oil canister here. I would go ahead and take this, uh, this loose and take it out. Now, the reason why I would do that is, and I'll show you this on the oil filter. The oil filter has a seal on the inside of it. That canister has oil on the outside of it. And when we take that off, it's going to drain some oil out. Now, how much oil drains out, I don't really know. Some people I've seen on the videos where they've taken it out with the plug out, other people haven't. And so I'm concerned that maybe that's a quarter, quarter oil or something, some amount of oil that, remember the six to seven quart discrepancy, I'm looking for it. And so we're going to do this different. Uh, we're going to go ahead and drain the oil out of the bottom of the engine. And when the oil pretty much stops. We have very little draining. Gavin and I are gonna come up here and we're gonna unscrew this cap and we're gonna see if we get any more drainage underneath. Gavin will film that and if there's any sudden rush of oil, then you can see for yourself the oil was drained out as soon as we unscrewed the filter, how much oil came out. Or is that a myth? We'll figure it out together today. All right, so Gavin, underneath. All righty, so Laying down the concrete, the older you get, the funner it gets, by the way. All right, so now I'm going to drag this underneath and we're going to determine uh, which extension that we're going to use. One thing I do want to make a very important uh, a note of is that when you're using the reacher here, you want to make sure that before you put oil in this, after you've laid the container down and you're ready to go, that you open the vent. Because when you when oil starts to go into this con uh, container, it's sealed. It needs somewhere to displace the air that's in there, and that'll come out of here. If not, you'll get some gurgling splash back in here. So make sure you, that your air vent is open. Same thing's true when you're completely finished and you're ready to lift this up. Make sure you close it. So when you pick it up from the handle, you don't end up with a with a with an oil spill or making a mess. So here we go. Let's see what we need here. 
Got him? Help me on the other side over here. That's going to do it right there, Gavin. Uh, yeah, it looks like it. Make sure that's tight. Now, we have to slide this over. And let's take our 15 millimeter and let's start taking off our skid plate. All right, so what we've got to do now is remove the bash plate or, um, you know, Ford calls it bash plate. Some of us call it skid plates, but either way, it's this plate right here. This protects the oil pan if we get a little crazy off-road. And so let's go ahead and get the four bolts. We're going to take two of them out. I think we loosen the front two and then the pan comes out. So let's get started. Right, so we've got the bolts, so they're pretty much hand tight. That really doesn't matter, I don't think, where these bolts go actually which corner, but I like orienting the bolts or laying them down so the exact bolt goes back in the exact corner. Just a pet peeve of mine, I guess. We just have to lay them out of the way so that you... All right, so you see we loosen the two front bolts and remove the rear. So now the skid plate can come out. So now we can get our reacher over. Look at that. So we have our vent open. Um, we have our cap tight on this side and we have our funnel tight. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the pliers that Gavin has right next to him. He's gonna multitask here. So we have our basic pliers, no big deal. And we are going to grab this oil plug. Um, I'm gonna take it out and we're gonna to try to keep the oil so that it's not splashing everywhere and we keep it in here. All right, Gavin. So we have a couple rags here just in case things get a little crazy. Here's our oil pan. Now you'll see this is the black composite oil pan. It has sort of this waffling on it. Uh, that's probably on there for displacing heat, if I had to guess. Uh, now we're going to take this oil plug out. Now, Gavin, uh -huh. be ready to rock and roll, brother. The reacher works if you don't put it over on that funnel like I just had it. So we're gonna have a little, little messy, messy to clean up here. I can get cleaned up with a couple rags though. Yeah, not a big deal. Uh, actually, have you seen some of the videos where the stuff goes everywhere? This is actually pretty nice. Oh yeah, I've seen where it, like the hole isn't perfect, perfectly circular and it like spews out everywhere. Yeah, now one of the things that we're gonna do is when we're completely finished with this oil, uh, when we get it completely drained out, um, we are going to see how much oil was actually came out. We're going to pour it back into a brand new container that we have. Now, this container here is new, so there's no sediment, there's no oil, there's no, there wasn't anything in it. And the container that we're going to pull it in is new. And we're going to get an idea what it looks like. So I'm going to get out and we're going to let this thing drain. Stay tuned. All right, so the oil is almost completely stopped underneath. There's just a, a, a small drip here and drip there. So essentially all the oil's out. What we're gonna do now, and this is something that I would typically do early on, is we're going to loosen the oil filter canister right here. Uh, this takes the 27 millimeter socket. We're gonna loosen this, and when we allow the oil that's in here to drain to the bypass, 
uh, the bypass uh, hole that's in here so that it actually drains from the inside of the canister to the outside. Well, let's see if we get any more oil dripping out of the uh, oil pan at all. So let's get going. Put this back on here. There's the oil canister. Oops, where's the filter? Well, the filter's right here. Bring this over to the workbench. So you can see, this is the, the filter went in, this was the top. This is the bottom. One of the things I like to look and make sure that there was no reason that it was sitting in a certain way. Um, now there's uh, three gaskets that have to be replaced. We have to replace this gasket here, this one, and this one. So I guess we're going to see how that works out, huh? Let's get dirty. All right, so on this uh, Motocraft oil filter for the 2.7, it is part number FL-2062-A. And we'll put that in the uh, description below. Um, now, one of the things that I do want to mention, I'm doing things a little bit different than typically when you're doing uh, taking your oil sample. I would have taken this bottle as the oil starts to drain out, I would have had this ready and reach up and grab some of that oil. All right, the exception to the rule. This is the one-time exception to this rule. And I'm gonna make a note on the information I'm sending to Blackstone so they know what I did. Remember that Reacher was a brand new container. I did check it, there was no loose uh, particles or anything inside, it was clean. So what we're gonna do for the sake of measuring the oil, because I did spill just a little bit, not much, but I wanna make sure that I don't, um, when we determine how much oil came out, that we're not, we don't have a lot of inaccuracies in there. Like I have a little bit sitting here and there and everywhere else. So what we're gonna do is after we measure the oil, cause I'm pouring it from one clean container to another, once we're finished and we figure out exactly how much we were able to take out of the engine, I'll then take a sample of that and that'll be the sample oil that will go. That is the only exception to the rule because if you ever try to do that with a, 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 a pan that's not new, then you could be getting some of the contaminants that was in the other oil changes, and it's just not what you do at all. This is the one exception, and it's only because we're trying to determine in one oil change, the quantity we're taking out, as well as showing you how to do it. So once the oil starts coming out, once you remove the plug, you would grab a, a bottle full of this into the stream, fill it up, move the bottle, uh, put the cap back on it, tighten it up, and then we'll show you in the end of the video what to do with this. Uh, so I just want to make sure that was clear. I didn't forget to do it. And no, I would never take sample from a dirty canister at all. That's how we're going to do it here. So let's get started. So let's look on this filter. One of the things I like doing is looking for a top and a bottom. So if we look at this canister filter, um, we want to know. Uh, nowhere identifies that it's the top or the bottom, right? No writing on the bottom. We have writing on the top. So because it doesn't appear to be directional, I'm just gonna put it in for a reference with the letters up, the numbers up. So to make sure we put this on, our, we have a little, you know, part of a cut up bag here. I just wanna make sure I don't have any dirt whatsoever on here. So let's get our O-rings out, this ought to be fun. Uh, we do have our pick, uh, we have a, a hook right here. Hopefully we won't need the hook, but if we do, we do. Let's go ahead and get our O-rings out. Uh, just an observation, uh, the original one are red, uh, red O-rings and the replacements are this uh, greenish color with the black O-ring at the top. Now here this is fun, this is my first time doing one of these, so 
You know, I noticed the stem in here is kind of loose. Uh, that just pivots, probably unscrews. Um, might be able to take that out, but I don't really want to do that. Let's go ahead and pick out this. Let's go ahead and reinstall the new O-rings. I would imagine if you had a bunch of cups of coffee doing this, it could probably be better because then you would have the shakes and that would look really funny on camera. The one thing as I like is uh, install the top one first. Uh, instead of trying to get it so where it falls in there and then picking it out and dropping it to the second one, then we'll allow the second one to ride over the top of that one. And not rocket science at all, but uh, I did see somebody fighting to get get in it through. And see, it just rolls right over and falls right into place. Now, here's the fun one. So now we have the new oil filter in the canister. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a little bit of the oil. I still have some oil left on top of the old filter. Now, if the oil was really dirty, this had high mileage on it, I probably wouldn't do this. I would use regular oil, but just a tab of the existing oil to make sure that these O-rings have a little bit of oil on them so that when we slide back into the housing, um, in the cylinder block that it kind of goes in as easy as possible. Now, one thing I want to mention when we come back over here, uh, once you get a lot of miles or get some miles on your Bronco and you have mud everywhere underneath the hood, it's been splashing up and you've got it, you know, and you haven't washed it all out. When you're changing the oil filter, you might want to watch out for some of the debris that may be sitting on top of this filter. It may be in this situation where a shot back or something like that, that you clean some of that off. So when you take this canister out, you wouldn't have any fall back down into the engine. So just, you know, right now, obviously you can see this engine is like the day I bought it. Uh, but if it was really dirty, that's something that I'd watch out for. Now, one of the things we're going to take our flashlight just because wipe off some of the oil here on my hand but I just want to take the, uh, the flashlight here and let's just peek down into the 
canister, make sure we don't see anything weird down there. A little bit of oil sitting there. If you look in the very bottom, you see a little bit of that oil sitting there. So that's, uh, we're not gonna worry about that. However, you know, when we talk about oil that's left over in an engine, there's a little bit there as well. Uh, the turbo oil lines are gonna hold some oil. The oil cooler that's on the front of the engine is gonna hold some oil. Uh, so it's not uncommon to have bit, I don't know how much, half a quart sit around this engine in the turbo oil lines, in the canister, in, you know, wherever, especially the oil cooler. Okay, per the Ford dealer, the oil canister uh, that holds the oil filter, which is made out of composite material, is the torque spec is 18 pounds on that. So I've set 18 pounds here on my, on my uh, torque wrench, and let's go ahead and torque this down. So you can hear the click. There you go, that's 18 feet pounds of torque. Cool. Like a plan. And a uh, little hint on a torque wrench, whenever you're done uh, doing whatever you're doing with it, go ahead and take the load off the dial. Take it back down to zero. That way you're not keeping it. Um, you're not keeping any tension on the torque wrench itself. So I'm sure Gavin heard that. He's going to make sure he listens to me in the future. Okay, now Becky. Here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna get your 12 bucks worth right here. Okay, so we are gonna put in our new oil plug. There again, this is one of those little things. No, you don't have to uh, replace the oil plug every time you do an oil change. Uh, it's just what I'm gonna do. Um, you know, I, I worry about this little O-ring on there and how well it seals long-term. I don't want any of that a nuisance sealant uh, um, oil leaking out around it, you know, where you get the uh, staining on the pan and stuff. So I'm gonna try to prevent that. And if 12 bucks, an oil change prevents it, well, there you go. You can also get these at AutoZone, at least in my area, for about $6. So uh, if you choose to change it, if not, keep using the old one. And when it starts to drip or whatever, I guess you can change it then. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, because this is new, there's never been oil on here. We are going to add just a little bit of motor oil to the O-ring. Right here, we're gonna put a little bit of oil on that. So when I put it back into the pan and tighten it down, it has plenty of lubrication to find this little spot. And that is how it's done. So back to the underside of the Bronco. Let's see here. So you can hear the click, the oil plug, when it goes back in, it makes a nice solid clicking sound uh, or a single click. And that lets you know that you actually have it in there. Now, one of the things I'm gonna really do is make sure that we get all of the excess oil off of the frame here. It makes a nice dust collector if you're not careful. Something that I like doing, I know um, most of it, it's probably okay to put the skid plate back or the bash plate back in place, but I just want to put the oil back in so I can get a visual on the oil plug, make sure I don't have anything leaking. Um, 
while you're down there, you could probably put it back, but hey, me, I wanna double check and make sure that every single thing is leak free. So now we're gonna put the oil in and we're gonna start with six quarts. Um, what we could do, if you wanna get creative about this, let's measure what we took out. That'd be the best way. Let's go ahead and do that now. Now when you, uh, you get to see me probably make a mess here. All right, so this is another new oil pan and I bought all this for this video, by the way, cause I do already have this, but uh, actually the reacher is pretty cool. Um, I did make an operational error when I was draining the oil. I slid it too far to the side and it did splash some out and you'll see it on the top here. Uh, that was my fault, but look, this is a seven quart pan and believe it or not, the where you measure it is right there on the side and it is seven quarts to the exact top. I don't know if you can see that or not. So it's gonna be close. this is what I'm saying is gonna, we're gonna make the mess. Let's try not to make Now we're gonna go ahead and take the original oil plug out and we're gonna set it over here to the side. And we're gonna take our little reacher off so I can get to this. Now, probably in a, a best case scenario, I wouldn't, I would take my time on this, but for the video's sake, let's go ahead and try to get this thing poured out here. We have this little bit of this oil back in the top here, though. Mm -hmm. Please don't spill that. Oh my goodness. Getting full, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're getting ready to spill it off the top. You don't know the good news? I have to pour it back in there. Oh, that'll be even better. Oof. So. So as predicted, wow. I didn't predict to make a mess. We found- Oh my gosh, you're right at the line. We found the seventh quart. Now yep. there's a little bit of angle on there. <clears throat> yeah, but we have look a little at bit it. Of you can't here. see the line. Yep. I mean, obviously one side's more than the other because it's not level, but still. Well, I guess you found the seventh quart. Thank you very much. <laughs> you found the seventh court. I found you the found seventh court. You found the court. seventh court. Where's the seventh court? Okay, remember I said I had my Bronco off for 48 hours, two days. Uh, roughly 48 hours. I don't know exactly. Uh, probably like 46 if we want to be exact. But if we look at this oil, let's slide this down. Now you know why I had the paper in here. Because yes, I'm going to be making a mess. And yes, I want to clean it up. This is a seven quart container, all new. The line, <clears throat> the line is at the very top. We are just a little bit shy over here. Of course, we're sitting in at yeah, an angle, but we're almost out here. But here's the thing. Remember, I spilt just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And if I turn that container over that I have and just let it drain, that much would come out. So the fact is, is that we have a slow, in my humble opinion, a slow drain back period. This engine does hold seven quarts. It just takes a lot longer uh, than running it up to temperature, cutting it off for 15 minutes, draining it and refilling it. If you're in a hurry uh, to do that type of oil change, I don't think you're getting all the seven quarts out unless you've measured something differently. But for those that have measured at a 2000 mile oil change, they've only measured six and a quarter quarts, six and a half quarts, where's the other half quart going? it's in that extended drain back period. Uh, there actually still is some oil in the oil cooler, even though it's inverted, so it should be very little. Uh, there's a little oil in the oil lines that feed the turbo. Uh, and then there's places in the engine that you're gonna get a little bit. But overall, Ford says they put seven quarts in this, and I got seven quarts out of mine. It's what I predicted. It takes a long uh, drain back period. It's just an extended period. And typically when you crank an engine up and let it sit for 15 minutes, do the oil change and you're done in an hour, you're not gonna find all of that seventh quart. Here we were able to do it and we'll confirm that as we put oil back into the engine, I'm gonna start at six quarts, 
prime the engine, which I'll show you how to do that, and, and then we'll remeasure, and I'll probably, most certainly, be putting in that seventh quart because, hey, that's what I took out. All right, so we're gonna refill, now that we found that elusive seventh quart of oil, we're gonna refill the Bronco with uh, Motorcraft 530 synthetic blend oil. So, um, like I said, and look, I do self-admission -ad here. I have the world's smallest funnel. Uh, my larger funnel, we pour some stuff in there and it's not good. So we're gonna use this one, take me a few extra minutes to pour it in there, but we're gonna start with six quarts. Uh, we're gonna prime the engine and then we're gonna come back and test it, but I know we'll be putting the seventh quart back in it. So we just poured uh, the first quart in and now we have our five quart jug here. All right, so now we, uh, we have drained the oil, changed the oil filter. Uh, we have put six quarts back in it, even though we've measured seven, but we're gonna go ahead and do this by the book. Um, and what we're gonna do now is prime the engine. So I'm not gonna crank it up. Uh, we're gonna use the prime feature. And to do that, we're going to press on, on the brake. We're going to mash the gas all the way to the floor. And then we are going to hit the engine start button and see what happens. Okay, so now what we've done, we've done that for 10 seconds, we've primed the engine by mashing the, the brake and the fuel all the way, the gas pedal all the way to the floor and hitting start. It will not allow it to crank up, but what we've done is rotated the engine so the oil pumps had a chance to take the new oil, move it through that new oil filter, and so now we've got it started in the process of lubricating the engine. So when we do hit start, it's going to crank up and uh, we're going to be able to see what it what it does so before we even crank it up because we've just primed it we're going to let it sit we're going to check the dipstick once we know the oil level uh, is a quart low which we know it will be at this point then we'll top it off with that seventh quart and we'll bolt the skid plate back on or the bash plate and we're done all right now for the fun part we're going to put our bash plate back into place Now, I will tell you that some of these bolts have Loctite or a thread sealant on the bolts. Because I will be doing another oil change relatively soon, um, I am not going to do that at this time, but probably for the longer interval where I, I go from about I don't know, up to 5,000 miles between oil changes, I will definitely put them in there. You hear all those weird noises that come from underneath the dash of the thing? After it's been off for a while, you hear all the clicks and the clicks. It's kind of strange. We're going to figure that out one day. Fun times, Gavin. Fun times. Yeah. Mm. Come on, go out in the garage. Chains of wool. We'll have a blast.
wipe it off a little bit. All right, dude, we are done under the Bronco. Good. Not just for kids anymore. <laughs> That's a really long dipstick. It is. It really is. Look how long that thing is. Yep. Old uh, Boss Hog used to call those old guys dipsticks down there in Hazard County, didn't he? Yeah, Dukes of Hazard. So we just put it back down into the oil. Pull it back out. Check this out. Well, my, my, my. Yeah. See where the oil is? Mm. No. Right there. We're on the bottom part of hash mark. Now, remember uh, from the factory, the oil at the end of my glove is exactly where it was. Typically, you want to be in the hash marks. The oil was right here. And I know that we took out seven quarts of oil. Let's lay that right there really quick, Mr. Gavin. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put a half a quart in and we're gonna see what that does. Now we will be switching over to full synthetic one of these days, but look, if you saw the odometer in there, I only have about 16, almost 1700 miles on it. Uh, so we're just gonna stick with this to at least the next oil change, which would be about 5,000 miles. Uh, it's a really good oil, 530 synthetic blend, OEM recommended. So, Let's see how that half a quart does, Gavin, and we'll check back in a few minutes, and we should be done after that. All right, so one of my projects that I like working on once in a while, separate from the Bronco here now, is my 66 Mustang. You can see it's, it's actually pretty dirty right now. We have the hood sitting over here, and I've just uh, finished doing some valve work to it. We had a little geometry in the, in the um, uh, actually a rocker arm on cylinder number oh uh, whatever it was uh right here anyway so we just rebuilt the valve train now we're getting ready to fire this up but this is this is a 347 um a lot of horsepower the funny thing is you know the the bronco makes so much horsepower for it being a small displacement engine the 2.7 eco boost is a really good engine uh, yes, you have heard about some failures. Um, I know Ford's on top of that. I have a, I have a theory on what it is, and it's a boosted engine issue, not a 2.7 issue. Um, EcoBoost engines are very good. They're very reliable. If you look at the quantity that has been built and are currently out and running and pushing vehicles around, they're doing quite well. So today, the purpose of the oil change was to determine is it six and a quarter quarts, six and a half, or seven quarts of oil? Ford says the 2.7 Bronco holds seven quarts of oil. Well, if we come right over here. Now, we did something a little, un, I guess, unconventional. Uh, we did something strange. I used a, a brand new Garage Boss Reach um, uh, oil pan to collect the oil. I used a seven quart catch can here just to show you the measurement. So and I think we showed you earlier on here, this is seven quarts and it's to the top. Um, just below the top is the seventh quart and you see where it is, so that's seven quarts of oil. Um, if we come back over here, <laughs> the oil sample, last thing I have to do. Now, never, ever, ever, ever sample the oil this way. The exclusion here is everything here is new. But in normal circumstances, under normal circumstances, when you take the drain plug out and the oils run out of the engine, you'll simply put this into the stream, 
uh, collect the full bottle, and that's it. So I am, while we're talking, I'm going to go ahead and collect as much as I can here. Man, we're just making a mess. Um, you know, oil is this weird, weird stuff. It, uh, it, its job is to uh, lubricate the engine, uh, but it also leaves you know, at least tips behind. Like what's going on in your engine, you can analyze that. And so that's where this sample is going to go. Of course, we're going to clean it up, uh, package it, and we're going to do a separate video on that as well. So we, um, to sum this up, I didn't run my Bronco for two days. I am not recommending this is how you have to change your oil. We just did this to determine where that seventh quart was. So it sat for roughly 48 hours. I used the uh, block heater. So I plugged in the block heater right here. In the beginning of the video, you'll remember the temperature of the oil was about 124 degrees. So the engine oil was really warm. So I didn't have to run it to loosen it up or to heat it up in order to drain it. I had the luxury of having two days of drain back in the entire engine. And so it is my idea or hypothesis, I should say, that oil this engine the 2.7 has a long drain back period so oil sits in different places of the engine i would imagine it's in the oil cooler uh there are there's actually still right now oil in the oil lines for the turbos uh there's oil in the bearing assemblies even though it's not a lot but in the bearing assembly of the turbos as well so um you take this little bit of oil that right there is probably just a tick shy of seven quarts even though it looks like seven um, that's basically where the oil is in the engine. It's a slow drain back period. So when you crank it up, run it, you turn it off, wait 15 minutes and, and drain the oil, you might only get the six and a quarter, six and a half quarts of oil out. Uh, so that's, that's where it is. So there again, this oil change was done for experimental reasons only. Obviously you don't have to do all this for oil change, uh, but this just kind of gives you an idea of what's going on with the 2.7. So basically, um, oh, and we did find out when we opened the oil canister, we didn't get any measurable amount of oil out of the oil pan. So the myth there of taking it off was really, it's more of an opinion, I guess. So when we drained all of the oil out of the pan, and then we took the oil canister off, we didn't get that rush. So it looks like it doesn't matter if you do that first or last, just as long as you change the filter, that's it. And um, let's look at one other thing, Becky. Hey Gavin, where's your flashlight, buddy? Oh, it's right here. Shine the light in there. Can you see that? Yeah. See that shiny see the stuff? Fleck, yeah. Right, little bit of fleck. Yeah. And actually, we're going to point it out right here. Yeah, right see there. That. See that? Mm -hmm. Now that's why. Wow. And by the way, See, a little shiny piece in there. It's almost yeah. like panning for gold, except yeah, this is, is not gold. All right, so let me give you a little heads up on that. That is the job of the oil filter. Uh, to catch it. There again, as a lot of engines, build a lot of engines, does this bother me? Not one bit. This is actually better than I anticipated. Some of this could be steel, some could be aluminum, the shavings from manufacturing. The purpose of a filter is to collect anything like that, and you see it sitting exactly where it's supposed to. All of this perfectly normal and better than I anticipated, honestly. I was expecting to see some more. So basically wrapping up this oil change video in the 2.7, uh, you know I'm partial to it. I like it. It's a great engine. We found the seventh quart of oil. Yes, we went back with the synthetic blend right now. As we get a little bit more age on it, we only have like 18, 1,700 miles on it. When you get closer to that 5,000, 6,000 miles, then I'll probably switch back over or switch to full synthetic at that time. All right, so the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to reset the oil life timer to, you know, give us that reminder in the future. And to do that, you're going to go into settings. You can do that right here. You can hit this back arrow until you see settings and then scroll up or down. We're going to hit OK. 76% of uh, the oil life was remaining. It was only 1,600 miles, so resetting that. Bingo, we have reset it. Hold OK and reset oil life. All right. So we're good to go. Oil life has been reset. 
Okay, so wrapping up this oil change video, this is a little more convoluted than you have to make an oil change. I do admit that, uh, but hopefully you learned some stuff. The idea for me was to use several new containers so that we could move oil around and still sample it, uh, but mainly to measure how much oil came out of this engine. And you know, we started with letting it sit for two days, uh, using the crankcase heater this morning, letting it heat up about four hours. In four hours, the engine went from about 50 uh, degrees, what it is in the garage, up to 124 degrees. And all of that was because of the 115 volt uh, block heater that I had plugged in for roughly four, four and a half hours. So we had the engine oil that was warm enough to drain. We did the oil change, we changed the filter, and we measured seven quarts that came out, and we put seven quarts back in it, and it's measuring right where it needs to on the dipstick. Uh, I did use a new oil plug, even though you do not have to do that on each oil change. Some of the stuff we did here was a little excessive, so this is not and should not be considered your normal oil change video on how to do it. This is just showing us where that seventh quart of oil is, and I kind of felt like this was the case. So basically, the engine has a slow drain back period, which is not a bad thing. I mean, for an oil change, maybe let it sit 30 minutes or maybe an hour after you've brought the engine temperature uh, up to, you know, operating temperature, uh, let it sit for maybe an hour to do that oil change. Uh, maybe not the 15 minutes, maybe even two hours. The engine oil is still gonna be plenty warm in two hours as long as it's not, you know, below 20 outside. Uh, so basically, we know that this engine has a slow drain back period, and that's good because that means that there's oil in places in the engine that you need it whenever you're cranking it up. The only negative would be a little more off time to drain the oil and if you want to get 100% of it out. If not, changing that six, six and a half quarts uh, and freshening it back up, not overfilling it is fine and you're doing well. So, hey, if you haven't already, hit subscribe to our channel, like the video if you would, hit that bell icon so you know when we go live. And speaking of live, every Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time, we have our live Bronco show right here on Bronco Wild Outdoors. Um, extreme Bronco and we would love for you to join us uh, next Sunday each and every Sunday and uh, hey hopefully we learned something today I'm Dwayne I'm out thanks for joining us